Freebase is a shared database containing millions of wide-ranging topics from musical artists, to films, to books, to tall ships, to mountains, to politicians, to companies. This wealth of data is free for you to use to enrich your own web applications. To help you do so, we even offer a free hosted web application platform called Acre that makes combining data from Freebase with other sources and services a cinch. Let's spend a few minutes building an Acre app that can display the latest news about the three companies with the highest market cap in any given industry. We will query Freebase for these top companies given an industry and then retrieve news articles about them from Google News and display those articles together in a web page. You might even find this little app very useful because if you were to type something like top three pharmaceutical companies into any existing new search engine, you'd be unlikely to get the result you are looking for. Here is the Acre IDE, usable in any modern browser. To start a new application, after having signed in, you just need to provide a name and an ID for your app. We'll call this one Newsworthy. Our new app contains a single file called Index, the typical default entry page for any web app. An app can contain several types of files. In fact, we'll leave Index now and come back to it later. Let's start with a query file instead. Acre embeds the Freebase Query Editor, which was designed to help you easily construct queries of Freebase data. We'll start out by specifying that we want to query for topics of the type company. As we might not remember the exact ID of the company type, we can simply hit the Tab key to invoke the Query Assist feature and search for company. Next, again using the Query Assist feature, we specify that we only want companies from, say, the pharmaceutical industry. We will support any arbitrary industry later. Then we request the name and ID for these companies. Now we can run the query and check the results. We can also switch to the interactive tree view to get previews of the companies. Next, we'll query for the market capitalization of each company. For each company, however, there may be several records for its market capital for different combinations of year and currency. We want only those in US dollars, and we want to pick only the latest record by sorting them newest to oldest and picking the first one. Then, we also sort the companies by their market cap in descending order and pick only the top three. Finally, we want to query for the company's stock ticker symbol as well as the first associated image. Having written the query for the top three pharmaceutical companies and verified that the results were what we wanted, we want to now display these query results in a web page. This is quite easy because the embedded query editor provides a create template feature that will create a new server-side template file for us that includes all the code necessary to retrieve the query file, dispatch the query to Freebase, and then generate HTML from the results. It even includes default styles to make the web page look reasonably nice. All we have to do is click view to see this automatically generated web page. This template is only meant as a starting point, however, and we're free to rearrange this generated template as we see fit. Let's arrange our companies in three table columns, as well as remove the property names to make our presentation more compact. Let's also rename the template file to Go. This is how the page looks after our edits. So far, we have only used data from Freebase. The next step is to include data from an external source, such as stock quotes from Google Finance. We'll want to do this for every company, so first we need a for loop over the results like this, and then a function that actually retrieves the stock quote. This is done by constructing a URL to the Google Finance API service and then performing an HTTP GET. To find the Acre API for fetching a URL, we can invoke the Code Assist feature by pressing Alt Space on the Mac or Control Space elsewhere. When we type in Fetch, the first suggestion looks like what we want, so we hit Enter. Now we get hints about the parameters of this function and can fill them in. Since we don't know exactly what Google Finance will return to us, let's just log the result for now and inspect it. We can use Code Assist again to find the logging API. Instead of just viewing the page this time, let's view it with the console. In the console, we get to see the result of the URL fetch as an interactive tree. The body of the HTTP response is a JSON string, representing an array of one object, but it has two slashes in front that we need to remove. So let's go back to the app editor, remove the slashes, parse the JSON, and get the first element in the array. Now that we know what Google Finance returns for each company, let's modify the template to render it. 
Here's our new web page with stock quotes. Finally, we need to retrieve news articles for each company. This is done by fetching a URL composed with the name of the company, parsing the returned RSS feed as an XML document, picking out XML elements named item, and then retrieving their attributes. The template also needs to be updated to render these news items. Here's our template code now, and here's what it looks like. So our app works for top three pharmaceutical companies, but now let's generalize it, letting the user pick any industry that Freebase knows about. We'll now return to the file index, our app's homepage, and make it support industry selection. First, we add a text input box where the user can enter the industry he or she wants. Next, we need to augment that input box with the Freebase Suggest service that knows how to resolve what a user types to a specific topic in Freebase. We do so by including jQuery and the Freebase Suggest jQuery plugin. Now we need to configure the extension further, specifying we only want industry topics and that we want to be notified when the user selects a suggested topic. Whenever that event does happen, we'll extract the ID of the matched industry and navigate the browser to the Go page, passing along the ID as a URL parameter. Then, in the Go page, we retrieve that parameter and use it to customize our query to Freebase. Now, let's view the index page and try the automobile industry. Here are the recent news articles about the top three car companies. One neat thing about this app is that as companies rise and fall, the data in Freebase gets updated by contributors, much as Wikipedia gets updated, and our app will automatically show the top companies at the current time. It's not hard to imagine far more complex queries than just the top three companies of a given industry. For example, you might want news about companies in the pharmaceutical industry whose board members are also on the boards of the top three companies in the oil industry. Storing and querying intricate connections between topics is one of Freebase's greatest strengths, and combining that data with external data and services was one of the main reasons we developed Acre. With Freebase, you're getting a world-sized corpus of data for free. And now, with Acre, you're also getting a free, full-featured, hosted web application platform. So what's the catch? Only this. Every app you write on the Acre platform is automatically open source. So if I sign back in as a different user, I can still see all the code in the Newsworthy app. Although I can't edit it, I can still clone the entire app and save it as my own, which I can then edit or invite others to edit with me. This is similar to how you can view source on any web page and copy it, which was pretty instrumental in the early development of the web. We believe this app cloning feature helps lower the barrier to entry for many people who want to do data mashups but don't know where to start. Now they can take an existing app done by someone else and clone it as their starting point. As an example of what someone might do with a clone of Newsworthy, let's modify our copy to generate RSS feeds instead of HTML pages. This is just a matter of reformatting the Go file to conform to the RSS XML syntax and setting the content type of the HTTP response to application RSS plus XML. This is relatively trivial because all of the hard work to actually query data from Freebase, Google Finance, and Google News has already been done by someone else. Having open data, such as in Freebase, is not enough by itself. We also want to make it as easy as possible to do great things with that data, and that's what Acre was designed for. It lets you easily query data from Freebase and mash it up with or integrate it into other sites. To help with that, Acre offers built-in OAuth support. This makes it surprisingly easy for your application to securely work with any other OAuth-enabled website. All of this probably feels overwhelming, but Acre comes with plenty of documentation from in-place code assist, to a full API reference with quick search, to tutorials, to cookbook recipes. And you don't even have to start your app from a blank slate. You can just clone another app with a single click and start from there. Also, if you're not sure how to use some API, then you can search for it in all other apps and see how they have used it in context. Open code for open data, as we like to say. Try Acre out and let us know what you think. We can't wait to see what you come up with.